Julie Black is a multi-platinum, award-winning singer and songwriter who has collaborated with artists like Nas, Destiny's Child, and Sean Paul, and been dubbed Canada's Queen of R&B. Stick around after the conversation for key quotes, Julie's three most formative books, and the end of the podcast club after party. All right, I just pressed record. Hi, Julie. Hi, Neil. You look you look amazing. Thank well, you look you. the I same. Feel, I feel great. We 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 were both wearing these uh, green and uh, pastelly green checkerboard tops that seem to be made out of like hospital paper <laughs> and shorts. <laughs> yeah. You're lying down on a spa chair. Yes, I am. That has a towel on top of like this gray, like you know, it's like a. It feels like an expensive couch, but it's like kind of a curved, long couch. You're lying down. Yep, there, you got yep. your tattoos all over you. <laughs> you can great. I'm doing the same. I'm kind of squatted up in my corner of my spa chair. We are in Go Place. Yeah. What is Go Place? Where'd you invite me? What am I doing here? Oh my goodness. Go Place is that place you go to escape all things outside of this place. However, you can bring your phone. You can talk. It's co-ed. It's, a, it's like a, apparently it's like a Korean bathhouse type I've never been to a Korean bathhouse in real life, but this is what somebody told me. You could sleep overnight. For you can next, sleep here? Yeah, for an extra $15, you could sleep overnight. A lot of people come after when they travel. So it's 24 hours? It's 24 hours. And it's two minutes from where hours. I live. So we're in a giant 24-hour spa yeah. in Markham, Ontario, Canada. Yes, yeah, that can be too much because it sounds like... Sounds like with people showering in the background? Out of showering, it's all good. All types of stuff. Cooking. No, no there's no such thing uh, as too much on this show. Right. What we actually like to do is, I just like to describe the scene for people because every single chapter of three books is somewhere else. Mm, you know? I love that. It's in a church in Texas. Yeah. It's on a picnic table in Houston. We're all over the place on this show. And now we're at a Korean inspired bathhouse called Go Place, yeah. north of Toronto, Canada. Open 24 hours a day. This thing opened in the pandemic. Bold move. Right. And apparently it's packed. Like they said, they get 400 people through here at a time so now i have to pick the window that i come so i'll oh. come out, i'll come like six in the morning i'll come at 10 at night they have all these these um jade rooms like the saunas infrared sauna you can get massages i love getting a foot massage by david he's my guy <laughs> I, if david's not here i'm not coming <laughs> You know, oh, what's robots, it? everything. There's robots walking yeah, around here, robots. yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're supposed to like press a button and order your food. Mm -hmm. And the ceilings above us are super high. They're like, you know, 30 foot high ceilings. It's all dark. There's these circle like uh, white lights around us. I can see out of the corner, when I turn left, I see like big, tall, like kind of bookshelves with books on them, mm -hmm. kind of like uh, uh, gas fireplaces. There's like uh, orange leather chairs, more like suede kind of relaxing stations. And they said we could talk, so that's why we're yeah, talking here. I think, talking. We, I think we could even sing. I even brought the pamphlet of this place with me because I brought it from upstairs. It says goplace.com, experience healthy living. I don't know if you could. Uh, we, and we don't have any shares in this company, so you no. know we're just really sharing yeah. the goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate you inviting me here, and uh, I was going to ask you to sing the pamphlet because I heard you do that before, and it just was amazing. But like, I know. You're feeling a bit shy right now. Yeah, I feel a little shy right okay, now. Okay, but the way we met, though, you were not shy because we no. met a few years ago when we were both invited to be co-hosts on the Social, the largest daytime show in this. I'm used to being the bombastic. You know, I figure they invite me because I'm like going to just talk my mind and speak freely yeah. and you know but then i was overshadowed that day and i was like oh wow like when julie is <laughs> on giving her opinion she is going at it and i was just blown away by your energy your thank career. you thank you it was thank fun it was fun and that we were really we were locked i think we we're still locked down those days yeah we were doing it virtually yeah and what yeah. makes you do that you know because you 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 got you got famous when you were like 16, right? Mm. Like you signed to a, a record label. You grew up youngest of nine kids. Ooh. Jane and Fincherry. Somebody's researched. Jane wow. and Fincherry of Toronto. For mm -hmm. those that don't know, that would be considered, what would you describe that neighborhood as? Uh, I don't want to uh, project know, a bunch certain, of adjectives on there. I know, there's all there. these words. People, you know, it, it's, um, <sighs> to be open, you know, when I was growing up, I saw it as the wealthiest place ever. It was full of multicultural, you know, it was multicultural, it was full of different different energy, food, music, education. There was so, you know, the news would say, the media would say it was at risk or it was 
etc but i was never at risk i had i didn't see anything but what my my mom wanted me to see i guess and my siblings wanted me to see i walked out a latchkey kid i walked home with a key around my neck uh, you know, with a red string, with, with a gear, with a with the key on your neck. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. It was tucked in my shirt. Really, <laughs> because, home because from you, you came home by yourself. Yeah, with my friends, with eight older siblings. Yeah, but they're like ten years, twenty years older than me, so they've already moved. They're married. They're all the things. You know, when I was twelve, you know, my sister's what thirty two. She's right, gone. She's right, married. Right, She's, uh, you know right. what I mean? so. And your parents from Jamaica. Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And they came over in the 60s, 60s. 60s. 60s, okay. My dad came from India in the 60s ah, as well. The floodgates were open. Floodgates are open. <laughs> <laughs> They're all coming in. Come well, you're on. Throw, but you get discovered Trudeau. like young. Like yeah, I heard you even had a, a record deal offered you when you were 14 from Sony, mm-hmm. but then 16 you signed to the first deal. Yeah. And your first album, it takes off. It, yeah, but it was it was it took off. But it was also legally downloaded a, a bunch of times. That was like the era of LimeWire, Napster, yeah, Morpheus, yeah, Morpheus. Yeah, yeah I mean, now it's like, oh, we have Apple Apple Music. So we you're saying Spotify. you're saying the sales don't even communicate how much people are listening to there it. There you go. And mm-hmm. when you say a record goes platinum, by the way, what does that even what's platinum in, even mean? Yeah, in Canada, it's a hundred thousand units, thousand. which is the equivalent for America. It's a million units. A million units based on based on population per capita. Okay, so a hundred thousand units, but you're sixteen. Yeah, this album takes off. Yeah? Yeah. And um, in that high school, Julie, Mm -hmm. at some point, you come across a book that I want to bring up for you now. You told Mm. me this is high school vibes. Yeah, high school vibes. Right, high school vibes. So like I grade got 11, 12 vibes. Grade 11, 12. Somehow. Mm-hmm. So you're growing up Jane and Finch. And as you said, you know, I grew up in Oshawa, but the media was always saying, you know, shooting another shooting at Jane and Finch, another shooting at Jane mm-hmm. and Finch is what we had mm-hmm. in the press. At some point in your high school, you're growing up there, Julie. And we're going to get into your life a little bit here. You read The Four Agreements, A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom by Don Miguel Ruiz with Janet Mills. Mm-hmm. It's published in 1997. So... Is that around the time it came? The book came out, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. It was popping off. Everybody wanted to get in on that. Everybody wanted yeah. to get in on that. Amber Allen Publishing. This is a cover, by the way. For those who haven't seen it, it looks like a painting. It's got like a thick green cross dividing the cover to four yellow quadrants with blooming white lilies against dark yellow and blue painted backgrounds. The four agreements is an all cap serif font in the center with the subheadline a Toltec wisdom book. That is a strange, interesting word. Toltec. T-O-L-T-E-C. I don't know what that word means. It's an <laughs> Me ochre, it's an, Okay, well, it's a Toltec wisdom book. It's got ochre-colored ribbons across the top and bottom of the cover. I want the listeners to feel like they're holding the book. A practical guide to personal freedom, it says. Yes. The bottom simply says Don Miguel Ruiz, who, by the way, is a 71-year-old Mexican doctor and author focusing on ancient teachings. What's the book about? Well, in the four agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz reveals the source, the source of self-limiting beliefs that rob us of joy and create create needless suffering. Mm. The four agreements are be impeccable with, with your, your word. word. Don't take anything personally. personally. Don't make assumptions. assumptions and always do, do your, your best. Yeah, that's right. File this one under 299.792 for religion slash Mexico. Julie, tell us about your relationship with the four agreements. So I remember um, this is the year I had moved out. I was like going out on my own now. I had a post boyfriend. record deal. Yeah, because record deal went away. Whole other thing, but we'll talk about that. Um, and this book, this book appeared. I, th- I believe it was my my boyfriend at the time. You know, Freddie. I could say his name because we're you know we're grown and it's we're we're friends. And um, this book came out and it was an easy read. Tiny, it was more like a manual almost. Read it and I was just like especially the don't take things personally all of the four agreements but when it said don't take things personally and then there's a part where don was saying not even compliments oh interesting because depending on how the person's feeling that day yeah or that moment that compliment may not even be authentic so don't even take that personally because it's coming off of how the other person's feeling right it's not about you it's not about you yeah right always do your best so imagine, like what this was really helpful for me as well because your best today is not your best tomorrow and the best yesterday. Like it's like if my hundred percent on today feels like fifty percent, no, change that to that's a hundred percent of your effort that you have right now. 
You know what I'm saying? No, say it again. So let's say, say let's say yesterday I did, you know, 50 squats. Yeah. Today I could only do 20, right? Don't say I only did 20 squats today. Oh, my failure. It's your 20 today is your best. That's right. That's your 100%. Yeah. So you give yourself grace. You know what I mean? Don't make assumptions. I'll, I'll, I'll be impeccable with you. Right? I just, it really helped me. It helped, helped me start to shape my thoughts. And now I'll fast forward. I'm like, I've been doing this, you know, what you believe is what you become, kind of like. You call thought. yourself the CEO. The CEO. That's all your handles and everything. <laughs> the she, at the CEO, Julie Black, right? <laughs> Yeah, quarter million people follow, following you on, on online on Instagram. I know it's pretty crazy. And you were doing an Instagram story just now, just uh, uh, on this chair right before the podcast yep. gets recorded. But but thoughts, so you say thoughts, become, thoughts become things. Mm. What you believe is what you become. Mm. And so, what do you mean when you say the record deal went away? I thought you had the record deal when you were sixteen. I had multiple. So it's like almost like being a serial monogamous. I had like serial record deals. So that deal ended up. My management at the time, we parted ways. And so I was kind of this free agent, this teenager trying to figure it out. You had a lot of friends that were also shooting up at the same time, right? Oh, Chocolate, yeah. Carnal, 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 Fischel, Socrates. Carnal, Fischel, yeah, Socrates. Baby, baby Blue Sound crew. Yeah, a bunch of us that were, we came from a, like a band camp together. Like yeah. we were kids in band camp. Um, so that deal ended up, it, it, that deal as it was went away. Right, they didn't know what to do with me. What was radio saying? We didn't have black radio in Canada back then, right? So we still don't now. But you know what I mean? It's just it's like, where do they play you? Where do they play me? Where where, 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 where did they play you? College radio. We have College to radio. To strategize. Yeah. Indy eighty eight stuff. Right? Yeah. CKUW radio. at Queens University. Hello. That kind of stuff. CIUT. You know all yeah. these things. Yeah. So at York University, etc. But what I realize is that. College radio, campus radios at that time, like we didn't have social media. That was reaching the people directly. Yeah. The, you know, people looked to those radio stations as like trusted resources. I mean, I remember college radio when I was in college and it was special. It was right? different. It was like, yeah, they were playing what people were talking about. It That's was, right. it had a different, you're right, college radio. And I remember even just listening to CIUT, mm -hmm. you know, I think it was 88.1 or it yeah, was yeah, really yeah. early. Really, yeah. Right. I remember that that, you're right, college, that's a special little kind of cultural phenomenon you don't hear about as much anymore. No. Yeah. It's very, very special. Very special. So you, so, so you, so is it after you lost this record deal that you were a free agent that you get handed this book? Yeah. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So imagine not taking things personally as your label, your label, you know, basically drops you. Here's a you quote know. from the book that jumped out at me, Julie. Mm. The big difference between a warrior and a victim is that the victim represses and the warrior refrains. Ooh, 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 give me that again. I'm going to dig that book out. The big difference between a warrior and a victim is that the victim represses mm -hmm. and the warrior refrains. Wow. Wow. That's um that's that's deep and it's and it's timely as I change as I'm going through restructuring of my company and being able to refrain, being able to not um react but take a moment to respond. That's big. That's timely. Yeah, not reacting is very hard to do these days because it, we uh, we have phones in our fingertips. Whenever you see something you've gotten in your hand, an email, a text, a DM, mm -hmm. instinctively you can respond right away. The yeah. idea of sleeping on it's kind of old news. And when we sleep on things, we're right beside our phones anyway. Oh, my gosh. And you always regret the thing you send that night, the next morning. I've, I've learned that about mm -hmm. myself. If I send an email at 1045... I just have learned that the next morning I don't like that. I don't like this. Guy. I don't like the way that guy sounds. Mm, the tone. The tone. I don't yeah, like it. I yeah. can just tell that I'm cranky and tired and it's late. And I shouldn't have been on my phone. Right. I love you that. Know? I'm so take I've, that as some wisdom as well. Yeah. You know this. This book. This book's been a big bestseller for decades, mm -hmm. right? So we're talking about how you got this first record label when you were 16. You're now in your mid 40s. So three. Yeah. But and you're still in the game. I'm still that, in the game. That's kind of what I wanted I'm to ask you. Still in the game. Let me tell you one more thing about the book. So this is Twitter days. Twitter's still around, but like when Twitter was more the thing. So <laughs> I was doing a conference uh, with my best friend called Empowered in My Skin. And um, and I wanted to gift all 300 women, it was, it was for women, women and girls, this book. Mm. 
So I'm like, you know what? Closed mouth don't get fed. You just got to ask. So I went on Twitter and I tweeted Don. No way. Yeah. And he responded. We slipped into each other's DMs. And I wasn't like super famous or anything. Okay. And they sent all the books. So we stuffed every goodie bag with that book. No way. Yeah. And this was um, 2015. Wow. What was this organization that... This is the organization still do now. Yeah, so now there's a podcast. She has her own podcast, uh-huh. Inkechi. Um, Inkechi Noir for my best friend, and her podcast is called Empowered in My Skin. And so she's still podcasting. She started, She transferred, transitioned over the pandemic into a podcast. Um, but yeah, every like once a year or so, uh, there's workshops and stuff like that. So summits. So I'm sure she's going to do That's really one generous of, of, you know. of Dawn. Oh, yeah. As, as you call them like, on a first name basis here. Hello. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even have to pay for shipping. Wow. Yeah. 300 books. Well, yeah. when you sell billions of books, it may make it slightly easier. But that's what I was kind of going to ask you about longevity because you've been in the game for 30 years. And 30 being years. And like hip-hop, R&B, like in music, like you just don't hear about people being around that long. It just, mm. it just seems so unfathomable, unless you're like the Rolling Stones. But it's right. so so rare. More, more than you hear the opposite. One hit wonder. Or you hear the... You know, so what what are some of your secrets to artistic longevity? Wow, no one's ever asked me that question. I, I, seriously, in my life, what are the secrets to artistic longevity? Now, on today, I could comfortably say um, being vulnerable and sharing when it's hard, and you know, being able to ask for help. My superpower is vulnerability. My superpower is sharing my whole life basically so whoever my husband's gonna be hopefully he's happy with that because you know i share pretty much everything i mean i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna share him but you know we share everything um but really whoever my husband's going to be that's an interesting phrase yeah 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 there's somebody i have in mind you know we're just letting the universe would you say about karma again I'm in the karma business. I'm in the, I'm in the karma business. So yeah, because we were talking about my show. I say I have no ads. I, you know, I, yeah. I'm doing my podcast, my newsletter. Is that I'm doing all this blog. And I'm in the karma business, and I only, I, you know, it's all free. It's for, you know, yeah, you're you're thriving. Yeah, I'm doing well. Yeah. So that just means the more you put out, that I do believe that the more you put out there, the the more it comes yeah. back to you. The you know? goodness. The goodness. Yeah. And so, um, what was I talking about again? You're saying vulnerability yes, is one so of the secrets that's one to of the artistic secrets. longevity. Because so many artists are afraid to show who they actually are. Yeah. They focus on the what. This is what I do. Right. Not but why. Not why and not who. Ah, yeah. So right. This is who It's harder I to am. share that. I mean, a, it's, it's, it's like embarrassing. Why though? Yeah, you share a lot. Yeah, and I like how much you share. I so share just give, give people so people that don't know you very well. Like, what are some examples of things you share that other people don't? I I share my lived experiences. I've shared that um, things that have that have happened through me, not to me. So, for example, I I share that I I survived child sexual abuse as a teen, and it's like okay, you know what? Yeah, it happened, but it happened through this vessel. So I can now help others, you know, heal and know that there's there's so much life and yeah. you're not defined by what happened to you. That's not that's not that I, I don't want my history to be my destiny. You're right. So my history is not my destiny. I love that. It reminds me of chapter 123. We interviewed uh, Susie Batiz. OK. Billionaire founder of Poopery who was uh, traumatically abused as, as a child. Wow. And she says a very similar thing happened through me, not to me. Yeah. I don't want my history to be my destiny. No, no, uh-huh. no. So you share about that. I share about you share that. a lot about your family. Lots about my you, family. When you, yeah. you have a relative pass away, you talk all about that openly. Yep. You know? Yep. You you, you share. Uh, here's another way you share. Um, at the NBA All-Star Game. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I had, you knew I had to go there. At the NBA All-Star Game, which, by the way, for those that don't know, this is the largest public venue in the world for the Canadian National Anthem. Because they do not sing the Canadian National Anthem, as you told me, at the Super Bowl. Nope. Right? So this is the largest public venue in the world for the Canadian National Anthem. And mm-hmm. you were invited to sing. And, yeah, and I manifested that. What do you mean? I, I started, rather than focusing on the Canadian artists who were selected and potentially didn't sing it the way I wanted them to sing it, or, you know, I was, I was being a hater. I had to change my mindset. You didn't like the way other people were singing the national no, anthem? No, I thought it was beige. I thought it had no soul. They were singing it like what, and you were singing it like what? Well, they were singing it 
um very beige and stiff what's beige and stiff give me a li- give me a line here what are you give talking me a about? line it was like it had no f- seasoning had no flavor it was boring it was didn't rep to me if we're really diverse we're really multicultural then we need to we need to show that in our anthem we need to show that in some way even in the tone in the texture in the, in the timber in the note choices like just but i was being a hater I'm like, okay, God, because I'm, a, I'm a quite a religious person. I was like, okay, you know what? Let's celebrate that those artists were chosen and had the opportunity, and my time will come. It will. And, um, and, this was, and then in 2019, when the Raptors were kicking ass... Is that like, the Kauai year? Kauai year. Yeah, yeah. We, won, was, the, we won the championship. We won the championship. Yeah. And, it, and then the people in the industry, and MLSE, and different people were like, okay, we, we for sure want you to sing that the anthem for that, right? So they have my package. They've, they've heard, they got videotapes of me singing the anthem. At we need Canada's number one hip-hop legend. Well, well r and I'm not hip-hop, but sure, r and I'm not okay, hip-hop. Okay, okay, we have okay, to make that okay, clear. Okay. Uh, yeah. We do have to make that clear. I'm yeah. sorry. I apologize. We can't edit this out because it's, a live, no, it's, it's a live podcast. It's good, and I say that because there have been buyers, promoters, festivals that were like when they were certain old school mentalities was like, oh, she's hip-hop. We don't want to book her. And I'm not saying that, okay, don't call me hip-hop so I can be booked. It's I'm a soul R&B singer. I'm not a hip-hop okay, artist. And for those that are, okay, so how do you define hip-hop and R&B? Sorry. I don't rap. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that. I'm not a rapper. So if you don't rap, it's R and B. Yeah. Simple as that. I'm okay. not a rapper. Okay. Okay. If you don't rap, if you don't rap, yeah, like Jay Z raps, Cardinal raps, Nas raps, Drake raps. Well, Drake raps and sings, but he mostly raps. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So R and B, you manifest. You manifest this. You were. Right. You were hating. You were so, hating. You were saying, I don't like how these people are singing the national yeah. anthem. It doesn't have. It doesn't have soul. Doesn't have the right timber. All this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you get invited to go on the stage. Right. For those that don't know our national anthem, like, could you just tell us what you did there? Could you just sing a couple bars here? Like, could you tell us? So tell us how it's supposed so, to go and tell us what you did. Okay. So because I'm, I'm walking, treading lightly on this because this is, I want to really honor the decision I made and indigenous people. And you'll hear why. So um, 2020 Indigenous Lives Matters became, uh, you know, a news uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Item. Item. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Headlines. Trending. Trending. Mm-hmm. They recovered many bodies. They did not discover. They recovered many bodies of children that were in residential school, etc. And that's part of the learning. People are like, oh, they, they discovered. No, they didn't. Discover. Front page news in Canada over and over again. At the front of churches, there's, you know, 100 bodies, 200 bodies recovered. Mm-hmm. Right. So I decided no more anthem for me. And I was asked many times. And I'm like, no more anthem. No more. Okay. Yeah. No more anthem. No more anthem. I need to do some learning. Anyway, fast forward now. Here's 2022, December, right before Christmas. And email. So, no, let's go back. So, I'm supposed to sing the anthem for this, the Kauai year. Uh huh. They pick somebody else. Oh. All of a sudden, Julie's not doing it. I'm devastated. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm independent artist independent management i'm doing it all myself with the help of some people and i'm like what the hell like when is it my turn god like when is this gonna happen fast forward now but then there's the 2020 all the news headlines and then you don't want to sing it well there you go okay. i don't i don't even want to sing right it. then what happens december now we're in december now we're in december 2022 uh-huh. an email just literally just bloops, pops into my to my email box saying would julie black be interested in singing the anthem for the 2023 NBA All Star Game. Who sends that email? Who's that from? This is from the NBA. So the NBA. Okay, yeah. they just they, okay. They found yeah. you. They found me. Uh huh. But they already. So I tell people, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. They already had all the goods. And what set me apart is the the few French lines that I always sing. They're like, we were looking at a couple other people, but they didn't do the French. I was like, okay. So they loved that's it. What I'm, that's what I'm right? waiting for that yeah. first line. Okay, <laughs> I want mean, you to keep saying your voice is amazing. Thank okay, you. so then you get the email, and now you go. You turn from a hater to a An appreciator. Appreciate. <laughs> you are the best. <laughs> you are the best. From a hater to appreciator. So you say yes. I say yes. Yes, Ju- you say uh, yes. Julie might be interested. <laughs> yeah, she might be. Yeah, she may be interested. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's me. And so. <laughs> and so now I start going line by line, 
going through the anthem. Because I heard you don't read music. No, no, zero. I don't read music at all. <laughs> it's all ear. so that's baffling ear. to people that know how successful you've been in your R and B career. Right to think that you don't read music. So then yeah. you go line by line, and what are you doing? Because you're not writing music. You're no, writing what? Uh, so no, going through the lyrics mm-hmm. of O Canada to say what am I actually saying? Oh. Let me actually look at the words. Let for me look once. at the yeah. words that I learned at five we years old. We grow up thinking this, re- re- sing this at the front of, and, and I know it's the same. A lot of countries who listen to this, the shows listen to kind of around the world. Mm-hmm. Americans will be familiar with singing the Star Spangled Banner every day in school. Canadians sing Oh Canada every single day of school. My kids sing it every single morning to this day. To this day. To this day, they're singing it every single morning at school, public school. Wow. Right. Okay. okay so it's every day, but. This introspective analysis had not been done probably by any of us. Right. And what do you discover when you go through the lines? So I go through the lines. Oh, Canada, our home. And it says, and native land. And I stop. Oh, Canada, our home. And it felt like a speed bump. It felt like I was cursing. I was like, okay, I'm going to go through it. Oh, Canada, our, our home. On the native land, right, our home on, we are on, it's a land acknowledgement. Ah, we've been saying land acknowledgements through, even on Zoom, we are that's on right. the Mississauga of the Credits, mm-hmm. etc. the Nishnabe, the, you know, the Wendat, etc. Mm-hmm. That's, be, that's has become, that has become more common in culture over the past few years. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I've recorded it as a voice note. And um, a good friend of mine, Selena Young, who, was at, who I didn't know, was the head of, of Indigenous um, Relations for the City of Toronto. I had no idea. She joined 100 Strong and Sexy, my women's and girls empowerment organization, as a member. And has been a member for years. And I did not know that she's Indigenous. And I didn't know that she was like the boss babe for all things Indigenous peoples, rights, studies, etc. So she sent me a message saying, have you ever considered X? And then all I had to do, I just, in that instant, I sent her the voice note. That have you, have she, you ever considered what? Flipping the word. Oh, she suggested it. So she didn't. You were she, already going to do it. I was already going to do it. Really? Right. So she didn't say the word on, but yeah, she said, yeah. would you consider reimagining the anthem? Wow. And was, I, it, was, that the, was it the same idea that you had? Same, similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But well, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of other was parts. Was there other too. parts of the anthem that um, those with indigenous uh, academic backgrounds, it sounds like, uh, take exception to yeah, other lines? Well, it's like uh, our, our home on indigenous land instead uh, of native. Okay, okay. You know, okay. there's the whole God. Right, because the God. word native is not really used as anymore. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. There's God keep our land. They say creator. You know, uh, so it's like, you know okay. what? Now that we get uh-huh. into a, well, a little bit too much of a jambalaya, I'm yeah. like, we're not going to do the stir fry here. Um, if I were to choose one word, <laughs> yeah. it'll be on. Wow. And so. Well, that also I, helps you, though, because you now have somebody that is sort of on your team, in your corner, that you have a long history relationship with, and you could kind of run it by a little bit yeah, in advance because right. you don't want to go. I can imagine that you could also like be trying to, you know, represent a background, and then you could me- totally mess it up. Well, I'm gonna be. They call me truth teller now, so I'm gonna be open and remember what happened with the tenors. Do you remember that situation? When, Please tell us. Right. Well, one of the gentlemen, the three tenors, the three tenors, because they're the three now, right? I thought it would be the four. I, I, the, 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 now they're, they're called they're the tenors. Not, I, I think they were called the three tenors when I was a kid. Yeah, this is a, this is a notable tenors. music performing group. Mm-hmm. Three guys, I believe. Four. Four guys. It was four. And what happened to them? So it was during Black Lives Matter, and they were doing an anthem. I believe it was. A, it might have been a baseball thing. Don't quote me on it. But one of the members came out with the All Lives Matter shirt or something and it was it it wasn't a good look it's at the <laughs> height of george floyd and all the things right yeah 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 this, so it's like appreciation yeah. versus appropriation well, this is partly why you you say you call yourself a truth teller which i love and you say vulnerability is one of the keys to artistic longevity which is the sub question we're still kind of underneath and we're hanging out here yeah. for a while and i like we're hanging out here and but you also have to do so in the right way yeah with humility and have some grace around it you know, um, yeah, those are the two. So things you go on that stage, you're at the NBA All-Star Game, you do change the word and it, it turns into a global news story. Yeah. You end up getting invited to a feather ceremony. Yeah. But the uh, Assembly of First Nations, the AFN, they invited me to be blanketed 
and and receive an eagle's feather. So and what is apparently that? That's the highest honor in indigenous in the indigenous community. Like you know, it'd be like getting the you know presidential Nobel medal Prize. of freedom. Yeah, right? I'm exactly. not making something up. Just, just like, Nobel Prize. Yeah, 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 it's one of those one of those types right. of things. So you so you go. But that was like two months later. Hey, this was April. So the anthem happened in February. And there's a lot of vitriol. We should also add in yeah. that. Like I read the comments on the Globe and Mail piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there was a lot of people that were just like, oh, they were angry. They were. Very yeah. angry. I would. I would have imagined that you yeah. even got like I got messages. Hate mail. I got, got hate mail. I had to call the police. I had to, they had to. Well, you I just might, brush over few, that. You don't want to worry about this were, at all. <laughs> no, not anymore. But the, I, my first few shows after, there was like, like, visible police presence, and then there was, um, you know, undercover. You know, they wanted to make sure. Yeah, I was like, whoa, this is because you started a different. conversation that people actually were now are now discussing changing the anthem's words. Yeah, actually, right? I think this is the big, this is the thing, mm-hmm. right? So you started a conversation. We're now talking about change because of this conversation on such a big stage. Yeah, exactly. And I heard you say in other interviews. I didn't even think about it that far. It wasn't that far in advance. No, nope. like decision. three days. It was like three days before. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And to, sorry, I want to just go to this because it's something new to me. Is like, what is a blanket? Ser- so I saw the video of you on Instagram where you were like bawling. Ball. Balling. You were crying the whole time. So I love like it's just there's an energy coming yeah. through you, and and they but then the, they're they're doing this like um uh, I don't I want to be respectful how I describe it, but like almost like a chanting. Yep, yep. They had the, they and had it's the very chanting. emotional chanting, yeah. the drumming, the chanting, uh-huh. and and the elder elder Teresa and just speaking to my courage, being a truth teller, being an ally. Um, and that's the thing. Allyship is something that someone has to call you. You don't call yourself an ally. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You don't say, I'm an ally. No, someone has to say, you know what? You're an ally. That's the difference. It's big I'm lear- It's big learnings, Neil. It's big learnings. I feel bad because I'm sure I've said before. No, we do. <laughs> we all, we've all said it at yeah, some point. But if someone says it too, okay, okay. okay. And what is an ally? How do you define that? So I'm more into the accomplice. I'm into the person that's going to take the fall. It's going to drive the getaway car. If I'm doing jail time, you're doing jail time. Allyship now, I think it's just kind of like, it's become real, real honey nut Cheerios. It's just become real sugary and, and, and you know, loosely used where it's like, I'll, it's like allyship from a distance. Yeah. Let me make a donation or I'm going to come to that event. But are you really sitting in the mud with me? Are you really ready to make that sacrifice if you have to? Are you going to go to HR and be like, you know, these people are, we do the same job. It's the verb. There it is. It's not the noun. There it's it is. It's like love in general. There you All go. about love by Bell Hooks, which was one of our formative books from Brené Brown, and back in chapter mm. seven, in chapter seventy, you know, she said she said professing love is so easy and so cheap. Ooh. It's the actions. It's the actions. It's the actions, and so it sounds like, yeah, but taking an action like the one you did on such a big stage is a great example. Mm. Well, I was partly asking fishing around because so I, you know for me to learn, yeah, you know, it's like, um, you know. Yeah, so it, 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 sometimes these stands are hard to take though, because you say it wasn't a good look when the three tenors were an all lives matter shirt, and that's some maybe looking back we can kind of sneer and say, oh, that's egregious and so obvious. But you know, when you're in the moment of these sort of cultural zeitgeist moments, and you're trying to like take a position of support, it's right. difficult to know how to do so while that without also stepping in something. Yeah, it's that's I guess what makes. That's what makes activism activism, probably. And that's the thing. I never really thought, considered myself an activist before, because um, I, I, but now people brought brought up like you are. the Judy Becker clip back in the day that was on Canada Reads. So what is Canada Reads? Okay, so Canada Reads is a TV show. It's almost like the survivor of books. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great way to explain. It. <laughs> yeah, the survivor. You, gotta, book. you have to read your book, yeah. but you also have to be familiar with the other books. There's yeah. five panelists, so that you could defend your book to say my book is the one Canada should read. Right, and you did something controversial. Sounds like. Well, I read the book called "The Meryl Thieves" by Cherie Demeline. She's an Indigenous author, and um, how do you spell the name of the title? Cherie. Oh, the marrow, like bone marrow. Oh, the, the marrow. M a r o w thieves. Thieves. The yes. Marrow thieves. The marrow you read thieves. That book. I read that book. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it was an awesome book. It was it was really um, it's fictional, but it was reimagining um, what's it, it was kind of art imitating life type yeah. thing. Yeah. Anyway, fast forward. So I was. It looked like I was gonna win. Like I was doing real, real, real good. And I actually had 
I went into that show, it was four months to the day my mom passed away when we were airing, March 29th, 2018. And I was walking down the hall. Uh huh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, just take two waters. That'd be, if you could, how do we press the button for yeah, water? Well, sunset juice. Yeah, no, there's a summary other. juice. Dragon, dragon. Yeah, no, there's a Banana, drink that I love fruit here. Milk. What, do you, what should we hold get? On, let me tell you. I'm going to show you what I'm going to get right here. Um, hold on. Is it this one here? Whatever lychee. you get, get two. Get Boom. two of them. Boom. What are we ordering? The lychee. We're ordering the, the lychee. Yeah. The lychee. Roast lychee. Roast. I like how you say lychee because my parents have been calling it lychee since I was a kid. I'm <laughs> sure that's the correct it, pronunciation. No, I don't know if it's lychee Lychee, lychee, lychee. tomato, tomato. Right, right, lychee, lychee. lychee. I want to add another one there. Oh, there we go. This is so good. So somebody just walks, walks by in the glasses and black mask, full of black robes, handed us a little iPad. <laughs> Julie is currently going through and ordering us two bracelet. lychee juices. Oh, you can put it on mine. No, it's okay. You paid for the other stuff. <laughs> okay. What's the table number here? What's the table number? Table number. Hmm. Okay, she's going to tell that Where table. Are we? Under the big light. 530? 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. But there was gameplay. There was gameplay. So a couple of the other contestants were like, "Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna vote this person off." It's like it was like Survivor or something. So I'm walking down the I'm walking down the hall in the studio that day, and I noticed that the Pope. I don't even know if it's the same Pope now. This was 2018. The Pope decided to not offer Indigenous peoples from Canada. Uh, an apology oh right yeah that whole thing which is since ha they, now there's since then there has been one but back one in back that 2018 then. visit no nope. they didn't do the apology because no all apology. the all the um yeah these bodies were recovered on on um residential schools which were run by the church the catholic yeah. church uh -huh. yeah. exactly mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but he apologized to indigenous americans oh okay yeah there's a thing so the the irony Julie of, took exception. I, so the irony though that that day I'm now they did gameplay so they're voting me off so I have to say my last kind of hurrah on why I think that this book should still be in school so just you know yeah. defend my book. Yeah. The Marrow Thieves. And the Marrow Thieves and um I get cut off by Jeannie Becker who is a fashion icon here mm -hmm, in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um and someone that I've known and you know respected. Yeah. And she cuts me off and says, but Julie, why are you attacking me? And there was no attack. There was no, it was, it was white fragility at its best. And, um, and I, and I spoke from the heart and I said, you know, I said, whoa, why are you attacking me? And I said, did anybody hear me say Jeannie Becker? Cause she just inserted herself into the conversation like it wasn't her time to speak at all and then i said hey whatever you're feeling take it to the altar because i'm not the one responsible for your feelings or whatever anyway i went about my business that thing went viral had no idea went it went and so that was like the beginning of i guess my activism as far as indigenous peoples and rights because what i found out later on is everyone else had the opportunity to read the first few chapters of various books and then they were they chose their book but they the producers of the show at the time just they gave me the indigenous book so they gave the black girl the indigenous book hmm. it was very interesting why do you think that was um i think it was like a dinner mint vibes it's an afterthought just here dinner just mint. yeah my friend Rachel, she always Dinner says that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that My friend Rachel, she did, a, she did a theater production called Do Don't Be a Dinner Mint. Oh don't gosh. Be an Afterthought. So anyway, I don't want to get too far no, off the grid. Well, I love, I love listening Man. to you. You know this because we've been on the same TV show multiple times. And it's uh, the way you speak with the jambalaya and yeah, the dinner and mint. Take it food. to the altar. Everything's food. No, no, no. It's it's beautiful. And, you know, we, we, we zoomed in here because... You were talking about how vulnerability, and we went into some of the vulnerabilities you, you've done and, and shared on a public stage to form mm -hmm. your activism are one of the keys to artistic longevity. Yes. Okay, so now as we keep going from your teenage years into your 20 years, at some point, the next book, I want to make sure I get it in the right order, 
No, that was the last book. Yeah. yeah, the next book is called The Purpose Driven Life. Yeah, what on Rick earth Warren. am I here for? By Rick Warren. This book's published in 2002 by Zondervan. It's a big purple cover, sketch green tree with deep roots on a cream square in the, uh, in the middle of the thing. Cream Ribbon on top says the best-selling nonfiction hardback book in history. It's a bold claim. And at the bottom, 25 million sold worldwide. Rick Warren is a 69-year-old Southern Baptist evangelical Christian pastor who founded the Saddleback Mega Church in California. The Purpose Driven Life helps you understand why you are alive mm -hmm. and reveals God's amazing plan for you here, now, and for eternity. Follow this one or two. 48.4 for religion slash Christian living. Julie, tell us about your relationship with The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Okay, so raised Christian, uh, raised in a home that was rooted in the Christian faith. Um, and I was told about God at a young age. And so I believed and I was taught bible scriptures which uh in our um in our church it was called for kids it was called the golden text so you have to memorize your golden text every week this is a very important part you'll see where it ties back in and so but i developed a fear of god and right. this wasn't even from my mom yeah so my mom would put us on the church bus church bus yeah okay. and take sundays off she would take Sundays off. Yeah, and send us to church. Okay. She wouldn't go. Well, first of all, I didn't know churches had buses. That's yeah. start. That's the that's the first new thing. <laughs> They'd pick us up on the side of the street to go to like Sunday school. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of church was it? Pentecostal. 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 Okay. Like, yeah. What does that mean, Pentecostal? Well, this is well, this is what I was told and taught because mm. uh, you know all that's I know is what we I want know. Your, yeah, right. Of course, so, yeah. it was my mom would call it charismatic. Charismatic. Where you have a full band. The, the pastors, you know, real high energy, sweating up there, a lot of rah-rah, choir. You know, we have we have Bible study on Did Wednesdays. Did it draw people from all over, all backgrounds, all, no, all ages? Mainly, or was it? mainly Caribbean. Mainly, mainly Caribbean, Caribbean and now really diaspora vibes. African, diaspora vibes. Di yeah, diaspora vibes. Okay. Um, Sounds I fun. Loved it. it was fun. Youth programs, children's programs, uh -huh. conventions. Um People come from America, for sure, you know, and so it was because it was a church of God. So that was like the... Is that the um, same as Church of Christ? No, so it's type that type of thing. Okay. There's Church of God, okay. Church of God of Prophecy, Church of Christ. Like Susie, Susie who I mentioned earlier, was church, raised church, church of Christ, of Christ okay, in Arkansas. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'm just so I'm noticing some of God. connections, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, and so I got baptized, not christened. I got christened when I was a baby, but I got baptized when I was like 12, Sorry, what's the difference? That's giving my life to Christ. I got saved. I went to Christian camp and I had an experience, had a very spiritual experience. And it was like, okay, now you're ready. You're ready to give your life to Christ. Oh, that's what baptizing yeah. means. Yeah. So giving get, your life to Christ. Yeah. Wow. Give your life and to it's Christ. It's optional to get baptized. Oh, yeah. yeah you can optional. choose to do it. Some of your siblings did it, some of them didn't. Yeah. So all of my siblings. Are, had gotten baptized later in life though some were later mm. some was in, some in jamaica some. you self-select yeah yeah yeah. they don't it's not like an ally it's no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so okay. um so they said i was ready yeah and they asked my mom my mom was like are you sure and i was like yeah i'm ready and so so I, they put on the white outfit it's a ceremony they have a white outfit you cover your head they dip you in the water and then it's a big celebration mm-hmm Almost like a bar mitzvah, bat yeah. mitzvah type thing. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. I've been to a, now that you're saying it, I've like I'm realizing shamefully, I'm like, I've been to a I've been to baptism. <laughs> I've, <been laughs> I've been to. I've seen the yeah. yeah. And, and then you probably gave a speech too. Yeah, I gave a speech. Right. I gave a speech that my cousin wrote Did for you me. Sing? I didn't sing. I don't remember actually I don't remember singing. Okay. Um Everybody that missed same out. year though, my sister passed away. So my sister Sharon passed away. She was twenty four. Twenty four. I was twelve, turning thirteen. Suddenly she she fell ill on Boxing Day and never came out. January tenth, she passed away. We don't know to this day. Inconclusive. She left two kids behind, Andre and Chantel, who are my everything. They're now thirty four and thirty five. And um yeah. So there was a lot going on that that yeah. year. And so I was ready. And that was I started my journey. That's why people laugh because my friends laugh because I don't really swear. Like I might say shit, but even that I feel like I might go to hell and burn. So they really put a lot of like fear in you. That's the only thing about that faith at, at the time being a part of that denomination and 
and not understanding, not having my my frontal lobe, my my cortex, of whatever. Not until you're in your twenties. Yeah, yeah like twelve. Barely twenty eight. Yeah, the science is They saying. keep changing the age, and then everyone's <laughs> regretting when they started drinking or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, I became this Christian, um, and then after I made some mistakes, I thought I was gonna what they call backsliding. You know what I mean? I had sex and I was drinking and How just doing all that. I'm a teenager, like 15, 16. You know what I mean? I was abused. I'm like, great. Now I'm really going to go to hell and burn, taking all the blame. Like, it was just crazy. And interestingly enough, it's... The abuse was not connected to the church. No, the abuse was not connected to the church. No, at all. Um, it was my neighbor's brother, um, who I've since seen. And I actually, like, I've forgiven. I'm like, okay, listen, like, you know, take yourself off the cross. Like, really? Like we just need to move, just move through life, you know. What does that phrase mean? Take yourself off the cross. Oh, yeah. This is my, I always use these. Sometimes I use these church analogies. Uh, Jesus was crucified. Yeah, you know, and sometimes that he, part I knew. I yeah, <laughs> and, so, so, <laughs> and sometimes when you've done something wrong or you feel like you've done something wrong, uh, it's you like you'll put yourself on, on the, the cross. cross. I see. And I mean, like take yourself off the cross. Man. Wow. It's what? All, what can you, sorry to say this, but like, why? How? Why did you get to this place of forgiveness? And a lot of people don't get to that place. Right. Well, this is the thing about the purpose-driven life. What on earth am I here for? I'm not here to live in regret and shame. I'm not here. Doesn't to, serve. Doesn't me. serve me. It doesn't mm-hmm. serve anyone. My history is not going to be my destiny. And so this book, which is 42 days, 42 chapters, 42 Bible scriptures, and a question to consider, a point to ponder. So it was a bit of a, a course. It's like you know what. You know, this is where I could appreciate being taught that Jesus, you know, 40 days, uh, you know, he after he passed away, he roamed and all types. Of well, that's why it's 42. That's why. Well, I don't know if that's why it's 42, but apparently that's there's something about the number 42. There was like he said something about Moses and different people. With the, you have it there. He, said he says he says, well, he does say we are products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. That's there the line you right go. From the book. There you go. So that's where you had the stories in your mind of I'm going to hell because mm-hmm. you're having sex, you're drinking, you're, you had, you've you been abused. All these things happen. You're a teenager. Mm-hmm. You read this book. You're a little older than that, sounds like. Yes. Because the book didn't come out till 2002. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and you start to let go of the stories you were telling yourself. Stories you're telling yourself. This is interesting because you... I've heard you talk a lot about stories you've told yourself. Uh-huh. I've heard you talk about how at, 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 t- at 10 years old, you were five foot 10. Yeah, a size ten, 10 shoe. It was a size 10 shoe. And size 10 pant. And here comes a, a, a lovely server with two Thank orange you. cups with black lids. Yeah. And ice cubes at the bottom. It's bright orange. What are we drinking here? Lychee juice. This is a lychee, lychee tea. Lychee. lychee and rose tea. Lychee lychee. And, and you've also, you know, stories about ourselves are really interesting because you were asked on a really wonderful podcast called Bravery, which I recommend people go check out and listen to. And you were asked, okay, what's been a story inside yourself that you've had to let go of and change. you said you said it was your singleness yes that's what you said you said singleness oh, yeah. had me by the neck even more than being molested and even after having an album after my platinum al- album get shelved mm-hmm. singleness has me by the neck. How, how do you think about not just that story although i'd love you to open it up if you're comfortable yeah but yeah how, and about changing stories about ourselves and how do you get get to that place what what are what is that story like for you today and how how do we mm. think about singleness yeah um and, and well now i've come so i listened to a, a, a pastor it's, like, it's funny my church roots has been serving me well later on in life because now i have a choice and i'm and i'm gaining my own understanding and so there's a, a man named uh, dr Miles this is Monroe. delicious is it yummy let me see if they made let me see a little shake here that's fresh it's refreshing it's usually a little bit more sweet but i don't need all that sugar now anyway so there's a, a guy named dr miles monroe he has since passed away he's from bahamas he's a preacher but he's more a teacher and he spoke about he's a whole series on singleness and understanding that that from number one you're born single yeah you know it's not this whole thing <laughs> about <single. laughs> you're born single <laughs> and it's true whole, though people overlook that point yeah, yeah. sure you're single for you were single your whole childhood. You sing your whole childhood, most of your life. And then he was talking about, like, especially for women, this whole notion of having to be picked. Mm. And if, you aren't, if you're not chosen, you're not selected, then you're less than. 
if you're not chosen, you're not selected. You're not because you and you said because uh, I wasn't chosen, I felt less than. You said that yeah. exact phrase, yeah, yeah, right. And so, and then the whole pressure around having children oh my gosh. and all the biological things. clock, biological clock, you know. And so, and then I've also made some bad decisions on past relationships, so I had to kind of grieve that, mourn that, because I, there's some that I, I should have walked away sooner. But I also recognize I'm in therapy now around this, around um, abandonment issues and rejection. My dad leaving when I was ten. Me being born a twin, I had a twin brother who passed away. Well, right after birth. Right after birth, right? And so, but recognizing that I did spend time in this tiny little space with this person playing. Uh, you know, I, I saw a documentary called Lone Twin. It was a National Geographic thing. I'm trying to find it now. It was years ago, and I can't find it online. I'm going to dig. But they showed the relationship with twins in the womb. Wow. And you fight and you laugh and you press up on each other and you do all type of things in there i'm like imagine that was me and my brother he was born alive he came out he was tiny but you know what i mean so I mean, how he, he didn't last very long no that my mom didn't know she was having twins so that's why i like to do work with the nick unit and stuff and wherever i can the neonatal intensive care mm -hmm. whatever i could do because it's personal you know i mean it's so personal if they had that technology my brother might have made it you know but I feel like I'm living both of our lives. You got into that. Oh, wow. You feel like I'm living both of my lives. And both you feel like lives. you feel that separation anxiety, though. 100%. Because of both your dad at age 10, but also your brother at age zero. At age zero. And I feel it with friends. Like, even my two very close friends, Asra and Jen, who are, they're my everything. We have such candid and open conversations where I was like, I had to share with them, like, sometimes, sometimes when you guys leave or you might be doing stuff with your other friends. Like, I feel emotional. Um... Like, I feel like, okay, what about me? Yeah. You know? Oh. Anyway, they're, they're helping me through it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's good to cry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It but is some, good to cry. Jada yeah. Pinkett recently said uh, crying is like thawing out. To use that term, mm. thawing. I'm thawing. Mm -hmm. That don't need to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chapter 101 with Daniels, um, the directors of Everything Ever All at Once, they said to me, uh, crying is our body's way of processing emotions that we can't verbalize, I good love and that. bad. You know, I love that. Um, yeah. And I think singleness is something a lot of us wrestle with. I think about my first marriage. I, I say to people, Oh, you had a first one. I had a first marriage. Stop yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I married the. I, with all respect to this wonderful, beautiful oh, I woman, read that in your book. I, I, I read think that. I married her because she's the first person to like me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And did you like, move somewhere? You guys moved somewhere? You went there? Mississauga. <laughs> No, was it someone away for school or something? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went down to school in Boston. Yeah. And, we, yeah, and then I, I got down on one knee right before. Yeah, exactly. And we got mm -hmm. married the summer between those two years. But my point was just like, I was wrestling with the idea that I was going to be alone. And I was like in my early 20s. Oh my gosh, a and, baby. And, and, but also like how many people are in a relationship today that feel more lonely than, you know, loneliness is at an all-time high. The percentage of people that are, that are on their own is at an all-time high. You know, more than 40% of people live alone now, which, by the way, is an alt never been higher, that number. Wow. In history, in human history, we're tribal people. Yeah. Right? And now, yeah. now almost to half of us are, are, are you know, we're living in, on our own. Not to say that that's a proxy for loneliness, but there is a kid connection with how many people are living alone. So what I'm interested there, though, is because you've done a lot of work on it and you're in therapy and you're speaking openly about it, which is a big part of artistic longevity what advice do you have for people listening who are navigating and wrestling with their own singleness not, right what, what how do you how do you get inside your own heart there and steer yourself how, what are some of the mantras you may use or oh my or, gosh more mantras i have mantras for days um there's two mantras that i say almost every day but beyond that because there's one thing to do mantras and another thing to actually f like feel or, or believe what you're saying Right. So there's a I have this thing about like kind of feel till it's real. I right? keep going and it'll start to feel real eventually. Um, but really investing in yourself, investing in your health, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, especially for me, positive motion equals positive emotion. Get moving. Positive motion equals positive emotion. Get period. Get moving. Get period. moving. Oh, that's good. Get moving. Just that move. in itself, that we have access to these free hormones that'll give us that high, and you be, just, we just need to access them. Activate. We need to activate them, and it doesn't take that long, right? So that's been, for those who know me and for those who follow me, they know, like, I have something called daily deposits, which is making a deposit into your, into your health savings account. So you could spend some of that. 
They might have to. I might spend some. I, I'm not trying to promote this, but I'll be honest. I might spend some on some burgers and pizza. I might spend some on some Prosecco. Yeah. But at the end of the Lychee day. juice. Right. Yeah, because mm-hmm. this is also too. There's some sugar up in there. Um, but yeah, so that there's that part. Um, I have also went into like I, I gave myself a full makeover. I cut my hair off. Yeah. I colored it blonde. First like, time I, I met like, you, you had long, long, long black braids, hair. And yeah. now you have short blonde hair. Short blonde hair. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the, this one. I cut my hair last year to honor my mom. Yeah. Um, Who's, who's passed through I don't say she passed away anymore So I'm working through that too So you know what My mom passed through Cause we're just passing through this place That's for sure It's for sure We don't know what's on the other side of it Yeah But one thing's guaranteed Or what's before, or what's before. Thank mm-hmm. you very much mm-hmm. Um, But realizing you know One thing's guaranteed One thing's guaranteed Is that no one's getting out of here alive <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are the two mantras that you say? Every okay, day? so there's two. Do you know? Um, do you know Gabrielle Bernstein? Yes, it's a super attractor. She has many books, but the super yes. attractor book is. I went to her, one of her talks. Oh yeah! Oh, you went to one of her talks. Went to one of her talks. Oh, you like like the, I mean, like life. the Tony Robbins type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it you wasn't, went. It wasn't ten grand. It was like maybe a hundred bucks. But okay, yeah, okay, that, okay, okay. Yeah, she's on here the, at uh, CBC at the uh, John Bassett. Okay, so you, for for those that don't know, Gabby Bernstein is a, is a really prominent author and influencer, millions of followers, mm-hmm. and she has. She, she said, it sounds like she said something that you you resonate with. Oh yeah. So this is her super attractor mantra. And it goes like this. My body is rested and my mind is clear. I start my day with positive thoughts and positive energy. I am relaxed, non-resistant, and clear. My day unfolds with ease and grace. People support me throughout my day. The universe supports my desires today and I'm open to receiving greatness. I am energized and inspired. Creative possibilities are available to me and nothing holds me back. I take action with faith and clarity. I'm healthy. I'm well and vibrant. Today is a great day. I'm having fun today. I bring joy to others. I bring light with me wherever I go. I am a positive influence on the world. All is well. Wow. Yeah. That's I, long. Oh, yeah. You I, say that every day? Yeah, yeah. Out loud. Out loud. So yeah. when you wake up. I started so up. So if I said to you, can you say it again right now, you have the whole thing memorized again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in me. That's like Bible scripture. That's the thing. That's where memorizing Bible, <laughs> memorizing the purpose of your life, 42 chapters, memorizing the mantras. And also, um, I realize that we don't really do much memorizing. Like I'm an no. actor as well, so I, I work on scripts. But yeah, like, you're right. Memory's gone. gone. We Google it in the right. middle of dinner. Right. So I brought this into... I have a mastermind group called the Gold Crushers, which is a, uh, um, it's a part of 100 Strong and Sexy, but it's a group that I, I mentor myself. It's 22 women. It's a whole other program. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, I can, I can teach you. I can help you get a, a firm booty, but what's that going to do for you? I want to make sure we're doing all things 360, mind, body, soul, spirit. And so they have to memorize the ladies one line a week. We say it on sis. Say it Saturday. It's called sis. Say it Saturday on video in Facebook. If they don't, they're kicked out the group. Like it's hardcore. Oh, yeah. You are awesome. <laughs> you are awesome. Thank I you. love all these. Like uh, you are just you surround. Another thing you're doing, by the way, to navigate singleness, I will say, it's like you just surround yourself with like this. There's positivity everywhere in your life. There is. There you is. Know? There's positivity you, you, you everywhere. I had to see it though. Yeah, but you but you leave it as Hansel and Gretel kind of like droppings everywhere. Yeah. These my S I S say it Saturday yeah, is yeah, part yeah. of this group, which is part of this group, which is part of this group <laughs> that I found. I personally mentor this. You know, like you, the way you're doing this, it's like this. I mean, it must have taken years to get to this place. I was, since my mom, my mom's, I'm gonna say this nice and slow. My mother's last breath became my first full breath. So I was going through life wheezing. I didn't realize when she was here, shallow breath, just shallow, you know, no, not really focused. And now I think I, I still, I'm still a little bit, I think every artist is a little bit ADHD. I, I personally, I think every genius has a little bit of that. We would do a little bit various things, but anyway, she left me, um, she left me the tools 
for my whole life she made sure she st- this is my belief system she made sure she brought me to 40 years she, she, was, you she were was 41 81. When she died? yeah she was 81 uh, and i was 40. She you're the youngest of nine yeah. so you're also you're the baby i'm the baby and i'm the only canadian born oh, wow. so i was like everyone's born I'm her like mcdonald's and you know all the things that she didn't get to do with my siblings so they yeah. thought i was super spoiled but i wasn't super spoiled my mom my mom was spoiled more than me she was spoiling herself mothering me a different type of way how, how do you navigate the death of a parent that, like i have both living parents in the yeah. 70s now okay so it's gonna come right what, nobody gets out here alive right. what, what tips you got for me the tips i have is to create um moments and document them voice note them videotape them yeah like not when they're sick yeah like i have foot my, my, my mom has her whole instagram page i can actually keep i stopped putting a whole bunch of stuff up because i just ran out of time but i'll go back but i've i started once my mom turned 60 and she just she said out loud at her party you know what it's time for me to live whoever any children because some of the kids you know they, they were living in jamaica and they had a different you know experience mom didn't have much you know and she you know it, it was a hard time she made it to canada etc but she just decided that she's about to live her best life and she said it as her little speech at her party she says any any of you kids that want to be hold on to a harbor any kids who want to harbor resentment and harbor malice i did the best i could it's time for me to live like she just and i looked at this woman who survived being abused by her because she had a husband before my dad and all these things and came and like got her job at general motors of canada so it was my mom's first job general motors yeah stop yeah. it yeah. gm yeah <laughs> and this is a woman that doesn't even have a high school education and she came here and she made life and i was like you know what i looked at her and like that's my that's She's my everything. That's my she Documenting is a big one. Documenting, yeah. right? Starting at 60. Ta- and ask video. them a bunch of questions. Like, mm-hmm. ask, like, make that, have them be uncomfortable. You know what's, cr- you know what's a, a, a wild idea is Leslie's mom sisters hired a journalist who does this as a business mm-hmm. a retired journalist from CBC has a business where she'll interview your parents for you but because she's a journalist it's not like you saying so where are you born mm-hmm. it's like and then they, she gives you like a CD oh, I sure love that so, but it's kind of cool. there's contact. probably uh, yeah and there's probably like if you google it there's probably tons of these little businesses but it just makes me think oh if I, I'm not it's not hiring someone to like to get someone to shovel your driveway it's yeah. hiring someone because it would be better coming yeah. from an objective third party who really yeah. figures out your and you get a story you know no, totally and think for me because I worked on on eTalk and I started to get into that whole journalist life my mom could appreciate I was able to kind of trick her into it like mom I need to practice you know I'm, I'm on TV all the time I'm asking people questions blah, blah, blah. and she's like oh, okay I even asked my mom to be my surrogate she was like 75 I'm like mom would you carry a baby for me she said huh I said yeah I want to keep my belly flat <laughs> what'd you say you. she said yeah she said yes my sister was like you're spoiled you're telling me mom's gonna have a carry a baby for you at 75 my mom was like well like i had nine oh no i had nine oh no i could carry one more <laughs> to do anything for me oh yeah um let's keep moving yes you got an interview to get to I know. just just for people to know julie is running from the spa to another interview <laughs> All about the the national anthem, which happened yeah. months and months ago. But you're getting asked about this all the time. Oh, forever! I'll be asked about it forever. Well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. I return to love is your third book. I return to love: reflections on the principles of a course in miracles. Yeah. By Marianne Williamson, big red cover, bold in the center. Mary Willis is a 71-year-old American author, spiritual leader, and political activist. She actually ran for president of the United States from 2020. In this spiritual guide, she shares insights on the application of love in the search for inner peace. Follow this one or 299.93 religion slash syncretic religions of modern origin. Tell us about your relationship with a return to love. 2015. Relationship of nine years is ending. Uh Uh-oh. Your choice or no? Uh... No, I would say no, but it was the best thing that could have happened for me. Um, my choice only because I was naive. I mean, not my choice because I was like, oh, who's going to love me? We've been together nine years. Foolery. Anyway, um, my dad. Because you're in your mid-30s, right? 
By then? Yeah. Your mid thirties, yeah, 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 and yeah, you yeah, had yeah, an yeah. eight year relationship. Eight year relationship. This is like a big chunk of your adulthood here. Big chunk. Big chunk. Um, my dad's diagnosed with breast cancer. That same week, I'm, I book a flight to Cuba to go on a eat, pray, love. I'm gonna go on my own trip. I manifest an upgrade to this like presidential. You have a butler. You do all the things. Whole other thing. Anyway, we'll talk about that another time. And so I take, I go, I get the, I get the um, sample of the book, A Return to Love. Uh, from my iPad and I take get on the plane I get to Cuba it can't download because they have different internet rules right yeah. right yeah it's locked it's locked <laughs> yeah so I go to my room and I pray and I say God if I am supposed to read this book I need you to download this book for me <laughs> Go around Castro. Go around and Castro. Make, <laughs> and make this thing happen. Because you just left this relationship. You're on an Eat Player Love Tour. Somebody in your family. Was it your dad? My dad. Your dad. Breast cancer. Your dad, but your dad had when he was 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He left when he was, when I was 10. Came uh-huh. back to my, my graduation at Seneca when I was 21. Mm-hmm. It's kind of back and okay, forth. Okay, back okay, and okay. Forth. So, so it's in and out. Guy in and we're out. Talking. Same He's guy. Same guy. with cancer. Yeah, breast now you're, cancer. And then you're praying to God for the, you know, the EPUB. Uh, <laughs> they, and what happens? I hit buy and it downloads. No way. Yeah. You know, that, that right there. That was that was divine intervention. Oh, where did this even book come from on your iPad though? Like I don't you know, don't you have to search for it? Like how'd you get this book? What do you well, mean? Well like oh, how'd I, there's w- millions of books. Oh so. no, no, no. So my friend Shereen Isaac, who I hadn't seen since high school, I run into her at Scarborough Town Center, a mall <laughs> in, in Toronto, wherever in Scarborough. Yeah. She moved to Miami way back when. She's part of the LGBTQ plus community and she couldn't live her free life here. So she moved to Miami and I can say this, she'll talk about it. And so she came back to visit. I run into her at Scarborough Town Center, and she's looking good, lost weight, side of her head shaved, and she's just like, she's just vibrating yeah. on another level, Neil. I'm like, I need some of that. Whatever you're drinking, oh, eating, I need some of oh, that. interesting. She says, it's a book, A Return to Love. I'm like, all right. So I got the sample. But I am, and the thing is, at that time, Cuba wasn't even, that was months before. That was like the summer yeah. of 2015. Yeah. So samples there, hearts breaking, turning into even more stir fry. <laughs> so now it's time for me to go. And that's another thing too. My mom, my dad, part of me was having surgery for a mastectomy. He's one of 6% of men to get breast cancer. So I'm like, do I not go on this trip? He's like, go on the trip. Now I'm, I'm also on a mission to heal the relationship with my dad because I keep picking guys that were like my dad. So I'm like, I need to f- learn about this. He's the one that my dad just called. Actually, we're kind of on a, where I had a falling out recently. So a whole other thing, whatever. So anyway, so so Shereen tells me about this book. I get the sample. I get the Cuba. Castro's like, hell no, you ain't reading this book here. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, nah, I got Jesus. So I'm gonna pray, and I prayed. Boom, book downloaded, and I said I'm gonna read this book in seven days while I'm there. And the fact that Marion Williamson it was uh, raised uh, Jewish and had converted to the Christian faith, but also just had just her eyes just wide open, I could relate to her mm. in this, this, this journey, this, this discovery. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this? Who mm-hmm. are we? What's really going on? And there's so much to the book, but the main th- takeaways for me was that there isn't love and hate it, there's love and fear and even like those are the two emotions mm-hmm. that kind of guide your life you might think you're angry mm-hmm. but it's the fear causing anger yeah 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 for like, sure you know what i mean like yeah totally that was huge uh-huh um and that's that's yeah we can pause like, that's big that's huge we had surgeon general vivek murthy on the podcast he said every single decision you make in your life is based on love or fear Period. there you go mic drop there we go mm-hmm there you go. So I started to t- kind of take a take inventory, take a census. Like even staying in that relationship was fear. Fear, fear of being alone, fear of whatever, what people would think, fear of all the things, right? But when you start to fall radically in love with yourself, 
the freedom like that that's my that's that i've been on this journey of emancipation i'm like what like i cuba taught me in that week to enjoy my own company Hmm. because that was my first solo trip like i traveled for work yeah a lot many people do solo trips yeah i do solo trips every year since Ah, then how do you what's the best uh, how do you enjoy your own company what like first of all you you're i'm living in the skin i'm in is my own company Uh uh-huh right so you're also very social like like digitally wise i mean Oh yeah, but back then we were in 2015, oh, okay, 16, okay. 17. So you're not like you're, really... you're not like you're doing Instagram lives. Yeah. And stuff so like now, that. I, now I intentionally show my trips because I want to become a travel blogger. Like I want to. That's it's part of my manifestation. Really, karma business. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, you know what? If I put it out there and show yeah. that I'm I'm doing this anyway, then someone's gonna pay me to do it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, with your following, that's that's bound yeah. to happen. Marianne Williams is really famous because she has this viral quote. Oh, our, our deepest fear. Our deepest fear. Yeah. Don't tell me you have this memorized. Mandela. Too. I used to. Our deepest fear is not that we're. But it's credited to Mandela, but it's not Mandela. You know, it's, it's her. her. Yeah. Everybody credits it. Everyone says it's Mandela. Nelson I Mandela. Love it's that not. One. Our I deepest that fear. One. So the effort, the people that say you may know this quote. Yeah. It's it said from this book. It's yeah. from this book. Yeah. 1992 Harper Collins. Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Yeah. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful, powerful beyond measure. measure. It is our. Light, Light yeah. not our darkness. darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am, who am I? I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, talented. fabulous? <laughs> and can you imagine Nelson Mandela? <laughs> Actually, who, who are you not, not to be? be? You You're are a, a child, child of God. God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure. Yeah. That's the There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure, insecure. around you. Yeah, you're born to make manifest. We're talking about shrinking. God. Five yeah. foot ten, age ten years old. Hello. You said you were. I tried to shrink. You couldn't said, shrink. You said I was <laughs> massively bullied. Bullied, bullied around my booty, around my size. Name calling. A name calling around the gap in my teeth. Like there's so many around my nose. Like I actually went for a consultation for rhinoplasty. Yeah, for a nose job. Because I was like, and then they said that, you know, I mean, shout out to whoever gets a nose job. Now I'm not hating. But like I, you wouldn't know what your face is gonna look like for a year. I'm like I can't. I, one year until my for my nose to set. I said uh 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 uh. I ain't trying to go through that Pocahontas. Next thing you know, I show up looking like Pocahontas. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Love Pocahontas. Very beautiful. But for me to just have two little dots, I don't know what I'm gonna look like. But you say you read this book and suddenly self care, self love. You got some of what your friend had in the mall when you bumped into her. Yeah, right? it was magical. So really, it was magical. I actually going to go back though, and listen to it. I need to listen to that book again. But you know, most people, you, know, you can't just read a book and it just changes your life around so tremendously. But it sounds you can. Like, I think no, I think too few people give it a chance. Mm, do you read this book? So you, who would you suggest this for? Who out there listening right now? Would you put you say put this book in their hand? I would put if this you book. Are, yeah, if you are wondering what your purpose is. If you are um, sitting in a place of complacency, loneliness, fear, um, yeah, anger even, mm-hmm. anxiety, mm-hmm. this is for you. Wow. Well, I, I want what you have. <laughs> Your energy is magnetic. <laughs> Thank you. It is. It's beautiful to be around you. I'm it so is. happy we came to go place together. Well, I mean, this is I'm, I'm going to follow this up with an ice plunge, I think. Right. And I know you got to race off to the interview. Just a couple quick fast money questions to yeah. close us off. All fast about money. Books. Do you, hardcover, paperback, digital or E? Oh my god! So or audio, or I should say. So I do hardcover and audio at the same time. Right, and it sounds like on the iPad. You're what's that? Is on that? the iPad, it's on the iPad. It's um, it's um, it's the book. The book. Yeah, the yeah book's exactly. App, yeah. How do you organize your books on your bookshelf? Oh my gosh, it's messy, and yes. I'm, I'm I'm a neat person. It's just mess. I just, just just disorder. Do you have a favorite bookstore, living or dead? Oh my gosh. I ain't gonna lie. I tend to quote Cole's notes. Cole's, is Cole's even around anymore? Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, are they? Mm-hmm, Shout mm-hmm. out yeah, to Cole's. Yeah, owned by Indigo. You used to get the Cole's notes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, probably there is one in the Scarborough Town Center. Um, how do you suggest people make time to read these days? That's the number one Habit question. Habit stack. We have. So I love the book um, uh, Atomic Habits. Mm-hmm. So for me, what I do now, the things that are most important to me to get done to, so i could feel like i've accomplished something in the day i do it early in the day yeah right so and i do my now because i i used it, my phone or my ipad for 
for reading sometimes like i'm like ah, i'm on my i'm on digital and i don't want to be on digital stuff but anyway so to make time for reading is that is is to put it early in the day mm-hmm. that's yeah. what i would say yeah. but also i like to uh habit stack and read on my peloton Oh, I see. So I'll turn the volume all the way down. Yeah. And, like, and I have the Peloton. I've been blessed with, with a, I paid for it, but I've been blessed to be able to afford a Peloton that the gear changes for you. Okay. Right. So once I hit that auto, I don't have to be focusing on changing the tension and all that. And I just read. Wow. Yeah. So that's been very helpful. And you've had a wonderfully long illustrious R&B career yeah, spanning just started. many decades it's yep. just getting started yep. and your mom lived till her 80s yeah and, and, and so you're, you're, you're I got 120 pegged yeah. for you easy right. hello uh, I, used to, I used to tell my mom you're gonna live to 120 you know what she'd say oh lord what am I gonna look like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do you have a final piece of closing? Yes, I do. Wisdom or piece of advice for us I as do. we I'm close excited. on? I do. I'm so happy we did this. This is two uh, years I, in the I'm so happy with this. Thank so, you, Julie. So, couple things. Um, one, I want to I want to declare that I am a wife before I even become a wife. So now, for those who are listening, and if you're trying to be a husband or a wife, etc., you're not looking for a boyfriend, you're not looking for a girlfriend, and you're not looking for any of it. The whole point is to become it. What does a wife look like? How does a wife, what is that for yourself? So anyway, I want to say that out loud because it's somebody that I so love right now. That's why I, I, I love this guy so much. Does this and person I'm, know this boat? This person knows I love them. Okay. Um, That's a good this start. Person, this person knows I love them, uh, but the the... My challenge is patience. My mom used to say, patient man, ride donkey. Hmm? Patient, let me say it in more English. No, I like the patient. phrase. I just want to know what you mean. So donkeys move slow. Okay. <laughs> patient man, ride donkey. <laughs> so if you're going to ride a donkey, you get on that donkey. You got to wait for whatever pace the donkey's going at. You just got to ride the donkey. Anyway, so this is my mantra. Uh, this, I'm going to end with this mantra from Faith Jenkins, uh, who... Uh, she used to be the judge on divorce court. She's married to Kenny Lattimore now, the singer. They just had a baby at like 44, 45. She's similar to my age. She went through a whole bunch of stuff about singleness and all the things. And she has a book called Sis Don't Settle. And I love the book. And um, this, I committed this to memory. So, But what I want to encourage and inspire everyone to do is you could actually swap out the word. So, for example, this is, it says, um, I'm attracting the highest, truest love into my life now you could change that i'm attracting the highest and truest clients into my life the highest and truest friends into my life so this is a new assignment for my mastermind group this is the new mantra so i'm going to say it as husband because that's who i want so i'm attracting the highest and truest husband into my life this man is loving loyal inspiring and kind i continue to remain grounded and keep my heart open I walk away from anything and anyone that does not serve me. Check this line out right here. This is for everybody. I start over as often as is necessary because I'm not starting from scratch. I'm starting from experience. And from every experience, I grow healthier and mature. So I pledge to live now, not wait I'm committed to excellence in all areas of my life. I continue to get better mentally, spiritually, and physically. I honor and cherish myself and those all around me. Last line, I'm becoming the best version of myself and I'm attracting someone doing the same. And for this, I will not settle. <laughs> Julie Black, thank you so much. For thank you, Dios. Oh, I love this so much. So worth the wait. Thank you. I love you too. And you didn't say I love you, but I love, I love you. you. <laughs> I love you. I love you, and I love this, and I love it all. I love it all too. Thank yeah. you, Julie. Thanks for coming on Three Bucks. It's my pleasure. And it's my pleasure to be hanging out with all of you just now listening back on that wonderful conversation with Ms. Julie Black. Ah, oh, you can hear in her voice so much energy, so much love, so many 
morsels of wisdom. She's at Miss Julie Black on Instagram. That's at M-I-S-S-J-U-L-L-Y. So it's a not unconventional, but a different spelling of Julie. J-U-L-L-Y Black, B-L-A-C-K, at Miss Julie Black on Instagram, whereas I'm recording this right now, she is attracting 230,000 followers. Um, she's got so much love and so much energy, and she puts herself out there in so many ways. There's so many things she does that we didn't even have time to talk about. Like She's the founder of this 100 Strong and Sexy movement. She glanced across it kind of briefly, but this powerful 360 degree kind of human wellness community. Uh, she has this, this, this thing called the power of step, which has also got its own Instagram pro- profile with step aerobics virtually that she kind of leads on, on a daily basis. There's a lot going on. She's putting herself out there artistically. And, you know, she talked about vulnerability being one of the keys to artistic longevity. And I'm not denying that. Certainly it has been true for her. But also, how about doing a lot of different things? You know, the old Nassim Taleb idea in the black swan which you heard about with the syrian chefs last chapter put yourself out there in a lot of different places a lot of different spaces start a lot of new things you don't know when the black swans will come you don't know when the platinum albums will come so many quotes jump out to me from this conversation i got almost two i mean i got like 30 written down how about if you stay ready you don't have to get ready (laughs) i mean i've never heard that before it's so it just popped if you stay ready you don't have to get ready i love that I love that. I really love that 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 sort of philosophy. I'm not saying I ascribe to it all the time, but what in your life can you prepare for so that when it comes or when it presents itself, you are ready? Julie certainly doing that in her love life, as you heard. Um, you know, it's different, I think, for everybody when they're single, how they navigate that, if they want to navigate that, if they want to stay single. But, you know, to vision board yourself as a wife, that's interesting. I don't think I've heard many people talk like that before. Here's another one. I turned from a hater to an appreciator. <laughs> She's got a way with words. It's beautiful. Uh, someone has to say you're an ally. You can't call yourself an ally. I thought that was interesting. I thought that was very interesting. Someone has to say you're an ally. This one, you're single your whole childhood, most of your life, yet we have this whole notion with women of having to be picked. And if you aren't chosen or selected, you're less than. Where she spoke openly and vulnerably about navigating her singledom, how that was one of the biggest challenges of her life. Another quote, I know I'm breaking past three here, people, but I got a few more. I got to get out there. Positive motion equals positive emotion. Get moving. This is an adage I need to remind myself all the time. I always get caught in a mental funk or I'm like in a day and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 2 p.m. I haven't done anything or I haven't, what am I doing getting stuck in my basement? I'm in my basement right now, but I just mean like I get kind of caught in these mental cycles and oftentimes Leslie says to me, just get outside. And as soon as you get outside, you just like fall away into the abyss of all living things and suddenly your problems, your anxieties, eh, you don't get as focused on them. How can you? They're not as big a deal. Next one, I don't say my mom passed away anymore. I say she passed through because we're just passing through this place. We don't know what's on the other side of it or what's before. And she continues, one thing's guaranteed, no one's getting out of here alive. You know, that's true, so true. Good stoic philosophy there, um, memento mori in, in its truest sense. How about that daily affirmation? Not the one she gave us at the end, but the one she gave us earlier. My body is rested and my mind is clear. I start my day with positive thoughts and positive energy. I am relaxed, non-resistant, and clear. My day unfolds with ease and grace. People support me throughout my day. The universe supports my desires today, and I'm open to receiving greatness. I am energized and inspired. Creative possibilities are available to me, and nothing holds me back. I take action with faith and clarity. I am healthy, I am well, and vibrant. Today is a great day. I'm having fun today. I bring joy to others. I bring light with me wherever I go. I am a positive influence on the world. All is well. Patient man, ride donkey. That was the last one I had written down. And also the one, uh, create moments and document them with your parents, not when they're sick. My parents are getting into their kind of mid to late seventies now. And I'm already starting to rue the fact that I don't have more kind of collected wisdom from them. It's my dream. I'm going to vision board it here to get them on three books. They have (laughs) asked them a few times. They've said no a few times, but I got to get them on. Maybe that's the way to do it. Rich Roll does this really well with his intimates. He's had his dad on his, his wife on multiple times, Julie. So maybe that's the way to do it. How do you create the podcast conversation with your parents? 
Hmm. Something to ponder for all us, all of us all. All of us all. Yeah, I'm going to go with that phrase for now. Three more books added to our top 1,000. If you're new here, just so you know, you can go over threebooks.co anytime. Okay, you click over. I just clicked over there right now. At the top, there's a few different headlines. Home, that's the front page. About, talks about me, what the podcast is, the FAQ. Chapters, you can go through them all by one. Guests, I've got a list of all the guests on the show. Sometimes people want to search that way. The values, which I think we need to add some more on. You know what? Let me do a little value. I want to I want to. I want to start talking about the values more. Okay, they were a big part of the show at the beginning, and they are still a big kind of part of the show. I want to kind of get more. I had a. I had a new value that I've been thinking about. Um, about not about quitting. More. Anyway, we'll get into that. And then there's the top one thousand. The top one thousand is the button I want you to click if you want to get a full list of every single book ever discussed on the program. They're organized downwards, you know, number 1000 was the first one from Leslie in chapter one. And then on the right side, I put a little number and that number is the chapter number just by itself. Okay. So we're going to add three more books to the top 1000 today. And they are The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. That'll be number 32, 632. 632. We're getting close to 500s now. Number 631, The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. And number 630, A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Those three books will be added to our top 1,000. And there's a list of every single book ever mentioned on the show together with who mentioned it. And as you know, we put an asterisk beside books that have been picked before. Did Julie have any asterisks? I don't think so. Okay, well, we'll add another asterisk later, and I'll tell you about it if indeed that happens. Lots of lots of books now have asterisks on them as I go up and down this list. The Fountainhead's got two asterisks on it. Man's Search for Me's got three asterisks on it. Old Man the Sea's got two asterisks on it. That means two. That means three people picked it if it's got two asterisks. Okay, so there's the three books. There's the key quotes, and now we're gonna pause. And welcome you back to the end of the podcast club. If you made it past a three second pause, you are indeed part of our after party. Where are you? Are you on a long drive? Are you walking the dog? Are you hanging out in the basement gym in Mongolia? Are you with friends in a car? If so, I want to welcome you back to the end of the podcast club. It's one of three clubs that we have for three books members. Number one is the chapter. I, I saw the chapter club. It's the cover to cover club. Those are people att- listening or attempting to listen to every single chapter of the show. There's 333 chapters. It's a, it's a pilgrimage. We're 20 plus years. We're going to go until like I'm I'm almost 60. I started when I was in my 30s, right? So it's it's a fun pilgrimage. If you, and, and I say attempted because you know if you start a show and you get half an hour in or 10 minutes in, you're like I don't like this person. I don't like Neil today. That's that you're right. You tried. That's all I want you to do is try. Cover to cover club members, identify yourself immediately. Email me and we'll add your name to the FAQ. I since I started saying that, um, I've had some people email us and keep emailing me, emailing me. I want to sort of make a little list of people that are cover to cover club members on the show. There's also the secret club. Secret club I can't say more about, but it's entirely analog. This club operates entirely separate from the digital world. Um, I've been really inspired by the age of surveillance capitalism lately, the book by Shoshana Zuboff. And she has this like phrase she uses throughout the book called the digital milieu. I kind of like that. It operates outside the digital milieu. It's an analog only club that means it's through the mail you have to mail me stuff i mail you stuff back i mean it's an entirely analog club uh how do you find out more about the secret club how do you join where do you mail stuff well the number one way you can learn is by calling our phone number one eight three three read a lot it's r-e-a-d-a-l-o-t yes it's a real phone number one eight three three read a lot and that's where we always kick off this after party this end of the podcast club by going to the phones let's hang out on the phones now Neil, I am Deborah. I'm calling from Winnipeg, and I just want to thank you because I was in a bit of a reading rut for a long time. I've always loved to read, and I read fast, and so I can cover a lot of territory. But this was the year when I decided I was going to read new things and expand my um, book choices, and that's exactly what happened. So I started a Goodreads account, and I've been tracking it, and I have been having such a great time exploring books that I've always thought I'd like to read, but haven't, and a lot of them have come from your recommendations and from your guests. So thank you very much for that. And I just wanted to suggest a guest. Jody Carrington has been doing some writing about um, helping kids be well emotionally, um, helping school cultures be supportive and welcoming and inclusive. And she's written a couple of books. Um, 
one of them called Kids These Days and the other Teachers These Days, and she's doing some other work as well. I think she has another new book out. I think she'd be a fabulous guest. So for what it's worth, there you go. So thank you very, very much for what you're doing. I look forward every day to um, listening to another podcast. Um, I'm catching up on all the back ones. Um, You're doing a really good thing, so thank you. Thank you, Deborah from Winnipeg, for the phone call. We gotta add Deborah from Winnipeg to the cover to cover club list. If you're making your way through, that counts fully. Um, love Winnipeg. I don't know why when I think of Winnipeg, I always think of the Forks. I think I went through there on the train when I was 14 years old. So about 30 years ago. Oh my gosh, I took the Via train across Canada with my mom, my dad, and my sister. Um, it was a dream my parents had since they came to Canada, and you know there was a lot of unbroken forest going through Ontario for like a few days and then we got to Winnipeg and it was like you know the big city and uh we went to the fork it's this famous kind of park there also one of my favorite bloggers is from from Winnipeg David Kane if you do not know the blog raptitude.com I highly recommend it r-a-p-t-i-t-u-d-e raptitude which has the tagline getting better at being human David has just been writing really crisp thoughtful prose in the vein of like an Oliver Berkman for just years and years and years. He's never really been a big kind of, you know, uh, put out lots of books and do lots of speeches and sell lots of courses. He's not really been super hypey commercial. And I really respect that. He's he's more enlightened than most people out on the internet are, uh, for sure. And now we've got Deborah to add to our people we love from Winnipeg list. Dr. Jody Carrington. I did just, did just tech, check her out. Excuse my stumbling there. Dr. Jody, J-O-D-Y Carrington, C-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. She's got books like Kids These Days and Teachers These Days. The book Kids These Days, a game plan for reconnecting with those we teach, lead, and love. Kids are the least of our worries. That sounds blasphemous in a book that for concerned parents and educators then I'm so glad you're here. If you own a kid, work with a kid, or love a kid, you'll find something inspiring in these pages, or dare I say, game changes game-changing. What is the book about? These words were born from hundreds of stories of kids, their families, and their support systems I was lucky to meet as I worked across Canada and the U.S. Regardless of who I met or where I met them, the message was always the same. Our kids are okay only if those holding them are okay. Hmm, this sounds very interesting. Kind of along the lines of Dr. Laura Markham, taking care of yourself before you can take care of others, managing your own emotions. If you are curious about Dr. Laura Markham, by the way, I did fly down to Brooklyn, New York, and interview her in her home back on Chapter 46. She's also become a big mentor to my wife, Leslie, who has taken her program, her Dr. Laura Markham teaching program. Either way, I will add Jody Carrington to our pitch list, our growing pitch list, and I will check her out a little bit more deeply. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to Deborah for the phone call. Okay, and now it is time for our letter of the chapter. This letter comes from Shannon Bell. Neil, I'm not a podcast listener, but I'm starting to listen to a few here and there. I woke up today in need of positivity, and I remember the Holderness family posted about their conversation with you and Two Minute Mornings. I took a screenshot of their blog to remember the three things. I will let go of. I'm grateful for. I will focus on. Today, I answered the three questions. I didn't feel much better. I messaged a bunch of friends on Facebook asking about their morning routines and got some helpful answers about what they do to gear up for the day. I drank a big bottle of water. I took a 30-minute walk outside. Then I sat down and listened to the podcast because I'm not fancy enough to listen while doing other things, smiley face. Thank you for this conversation. I took so many notes on real paper, and I'm so excited to be learning about something new. Stimulation being one of the S's I was definitely missing. I also love the Blue Zone basket you made for your wife, and I want to read more of those Blue Zone books. Thank you, thank you from a stay-at-home mom to an awesome 10-year-old daughter in Ohio. I listened to all the way to the end, and I will be on the lookout for small awes today. Aw, back. Aw, is beautiful. Thank you, Shannon Bell, for your beautiful letter. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you to the Holderness family because that, you know, they've got a gigantic platform. They've really invested in their platform, platform being like just the sum total of all the people that follow them. They've really done a good job sort of manifesting and advertising and leaning into that whole side of their business, which I have not purposely. I just don't want to spend my time and effort and money kind of on social media. As a result, the show is smaller than it certainly could be, should be, uh, etc. But I am more content. <laughs> 
and I am more grounded. And if I'm more content and I'm more grounded, then I have richer and deeper conversations. And if I have richer and deeper conversations, then I feel more fulfilled. And if I feel more fulfilled, then I make better art. So this just this is just the model that works for me. I don't I don't disrespect anyone who's gone the other way and lean deeply into big, big platform stuff. Certainly some of our past guests, let me just get a few numbers here, like um, uh, chapter 38 with Ryan Holiday or chapter 88 with Mel Robbins. I mean, these are people that have really leaned into getting millions of people online and kudos to them. There's other people like chapter 92 with Edward Packer. I mean, this guy has essentially sold more books than almost anyone. 500 million books. 500, not a typo. The Choose Your Own Adventure books that he wrote um, with R.A. Montgomery. I mean, they sold half a billion copies. Does he have many followers? No. He's 92. He doesn't give a crap about that. He's just hanging out in Durango, Colorado, doing his hikes and living a great life in his nonagenarian, is that what you call it? Year. So, you know, I kind of aspire to that kind of lifestyle too. Get some get some good birds in, you know, get go for walks, see your loved ones, make a good dinner, and have interesting and soul-fueling conversations. Like the one we're having right here. Okay, now it is time for the word of the chapter. For this word, we will, of course, go back to Miss Julie Black. Hit it, Julie. I walk, I was a latchkey kid. I walked home with a key around my neck. Closed mouth, don't get fed. Yeah, I manifested that. Or, you know, I was, I was being a hater. Well, they were singing it um, very beige and stiff. We need to show that in some way, even in the tone, in the texture, in the, in the timber, in the note choices. Like just we have a little bit too much of a jambalaya. I'm like, we're not going to do the stir fry here. Being a truth teller, being an ally. Um, and that's the thing. Allyship is something that someone has to call you. You don't call yourself an ally. Lychee, there it is. Boom. No, I don't know if it's lychee or lychee. It was white fragility at its best. I think it was like a dinner mint vibes. It's an afterthought just here. We say it on Sis. Say it Saturday. It's called Sis. Say it Saturday. Really diaspora vibes. Okay. I even asked my mom to be my surrogate. She was like 75. I'm like, mom, would you carry a baby for me? Habit stack. Oh, yeah, you better believe Miss Julie Black got the word cloud treatment. What is the word cloud treatment, you're wondering? Well, beginning way back with Rich Gibbons. Um, what chapter was Rich Gibbons? Let me just remember this. You know, I'm starting to forget my own chapters. Have you noticed that? <laughs> that was chapter 14. We started doing word clouds at the end of shows where our guest was, you know, particular t particularly articulate, right? Chapter 24 with Jonathan Fields, chapter 29 with Michael Harris, chapter 33 with Raj Helder, chapter 35 with Jen Egg. It, it went on and on and on. The most recent word cloud was chap chapter 121 with Johan Hari. So when the guest is really articulate or, or they just say a lot of popping words that I just don't understand, I like to make a word cloud together of them so that we can reflect and think back on these beautiful words. Words are just, I love words. I'm a word nerd. I just, I get off on how great words are. I basically think of sentences as like little pieces of history and every single word in the sentence is like got its own roots from a different time period and it's just interesting we're like talking in symbols we're talking in history there's so much cultural and evolutionary like history in these words it's just beautiful so we get excited about words on the show so we always close every single chapter with a word of the chapter and in this case there's a lot to choose from i was debating going with jambalaya which she used a few times which is just a beautiful word the jambalaya i was also thinking about Maybe going with beige and stiff, the way she used beige, I thought was really interesting. I hadn't heard that before. Dinner mint vibes, so that was good. Uh, Latchkey Kid, that came about in 1944, but it was a little bit too self-explanatory. Self so instead, I'm going to go with... Diaspora. 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 D-I-A-S-P-O-R-A, a noun. That can be, has two definitions. One is capitalized and one is not. The capitalized defini definition, according to Merriam-Webster, is referring to Judaism specifically, i.e. the Jews living outside Palestine or modern Israel. Members of the diaspora with a capital D. Also known as the settling of scattered colonies of Jews outside ancient Palestine after the Babylonian exile and the area outside ancient Palestine settled by Jews. Okay, that's the first definition. Second definition is a little bit more vague. A people settled far from their ancestral homelands. That's how I've typically heard it, like the Indian diaspora, the African diaspora. Now, I usually say it wrong, by the way. I usually say diaspora, but now I'm learning it's diaspora. 
the place where these people live, or the movement, migration, or scattering of a people away from an established or ancestral homeland, like the black diaspora to northern cities. There's also a sub uh, word here, diasporic. Diasporic. <laughs> the adjective. Huh, interesting. I have a feeling this word, especially maybe the adjective or the verb of it, is going to be bigger. There's so much climate migration happening. I think Seth Godin said, you know, something like 10, 20, 30, 40 million people per year are going to be moving because of climate. Like, we're going to have this happening more as the world becomes more flat and we all start rolling around. Uh, now, you might think, because of the first definition with the capital D relating to Jewish people, that that was where the word came from, but you would actually be wrong. The word actually comes from the original dispersion of Greeks in the Hellenic world, and later the Jews after the Babylonian exile. So it's actually a Greek word. So now you're like, okay, well, where did it come from? Is it Hebrew? No, it's it's Greek. It's It, it was actually um, derived from the Greek word, which I can't read because it's in Greek letters, but it's, it's translated into English. English says diaspero, diaspero, which means I scatter, I spread about, or to disperse. Do you hear me? Disperse. How is it that diaspora and disperse sound so similar? And I never connected them in my mind until right now, right here in chapter 126 of three books. And that's what it's all about. Disperse. Disperse. Of course, that makes so much sense. Thank you, ancient Greeks. Thank you, ancient Jews. Thank you, Julie Black, for telling us how diaspora came about. Well, speaking of diasporing, I hope that this chapter diaspores far and wide, all the way to you and your ears, wherever you are, time, place, date. Maybe you're listening to this in 2023. Maybe listen to this in 3023. It is a possible that we can send out positive vibrations around the world. Julie filled me with positive energy and positive vibrations, and I'm sure and I hope that she did so with you too. Thank you so much for a wonderful conversation on three books. Happy full moon, everybody. Hope you enjoyed chapter 126. We'll be back with a blurb in the middle of August. And guess what? August has two full moons. So we'll be back at the end of the month on the full moon with chapter 127 as our pilgrimage continues. Until next time, remember that you are what you eat and you are what you read. Keep turning the page, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Yes, we're going to close with a national anthem from Julie. Oh, Canada, our home on a native land. True patriots love in all of us. Amen. With glowing hearts, we see thee rise, the true north, strong and free. From far and wide, oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, kick, 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 keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Oh, Canada. We stand on guard for the